Welcome back to another edition of the Hallelujah Gardening Guide. My name's George Malkmus, founder of Hallelujah Acres, and we're so glad you joined us once again. Today we're going to talk about how to plant seed in that garden bed or planter that we talked about last week. You know, over there in the book of the Genesis, God said that everything that he created would reproduce over with, with the, the seed that came from that plant. And we're going to take those seeds that God originally created and have been passed down from generation to generation to today and plant some of those in our organic garden. Today we're going to show you how to plant seeds in a raised bed garden. Back a month ago, I planted some beet seed and they're already up. They will take another month to mature. But beets are something that you can do um, continuing crops throughout the season. So we're going to plant another row of them uh, in, as we continue down in this bed. We're going to take about 10 inches, and that's the distance I put between my rows. And I'm going to, this is a special tool I have, and I'm going to prepare the soil for the seed. I push it in, and I twist it to make it a V um, area in, in the ground. Then the next thing I do is I take my seed and I'm going to plant the seed. I'm going to space them about three inches apart in that V. And this is a little different than what many people garden, but I, I hate to waste seed and, and, uh, and after they come up, then throw away half of the plants. So I'm just putting those seed about three inches apart within that V area. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some vermiculite. Vermiculite is very loose, very airy, and I'm just going to fill in that trench with the vermiculite. You can fill it in with soil, but soil is a little harder for the plant to push up through. And so I use vermiculite and then after I have planted it, the seed, after I put my vermiculite on, I want to really tamp that ground good, good and hard to bring that seed in contact with the soil. The next thing I want to do is water it and I want to water it very, very well because the seed will not germinate without adequate moisture. And so we really soak the ground with the, the water so that that seed will begin germinating almost immediately. So now we're going to water in. Now this is the type of water I use on the end of my hose. I like this water, that this type of sprinkler head, because it gives me a, a, a heavy or a, a very light stream. I'm getting the air out of the out of it right now. And then I'm just going to water in very well. Going to actually soak it. I want it to be well soaked. I want those seeds. I've already pressed them in hard. Now I'm watering them and that should bring that seed in contact with the soil and very quickly start germination. I want to keep these seeds moist. I do not want them to dry out in any way, and I want to water them probably every day if it's warm and it's dry weather to make sure they have plenty of moisture so that they can germinate quickly. And then after the seedlings have come up, then we're going to fertilize uh, these, um, these, these new, new, new plants. And I want to show you how I fertilize here for a moment. This is my favorite tool. I use it constantly. Here is, is the kale, the red Russian kale we talked about earlier. And I'm going to just prepare the soil, just loosen the soil, by the way. This gets rid, rid of any seedlings that are about to start. Then I just take a little bit of fertilizer, just make a thin pencil strip of it, and then I go back and I just work that into the soil. 
I fertilize my seedlings about every four weeks. Keep the water to them, keep the fertilizer to them, and they will just blossom for you. The fertilizer that I'm using is called Garden Tone. It's an organic fertilizer. You can find it in Lowe's, you can find it in um, Home Depot and many of the gardening stores. Um, it is something that is available to most people wherever they live. It's organic and it produces excellent crops as you can see. So now that we have this soil prepared, the seed planted and watered, we want to know what's in that row. And so I always use some kind of a label and I mark on that label, number one, I mark, mark down, this is, this is beet. Then I put down the variety. Then I put the planting date and this happens to be the 14th of April. Then at the very end of it, I put the days to maturity, which is 51 days. I put that in the row, marking that row. So when I come to my garden, I know what's in that row even before it starts to germinate. I know when I planted it and I know when it's supposed to mature. I'm Willie from Hallelujah Acres and here's another quick tip on planting vegetables in your garden. I've got some pepper plants that I want to put into the ground and peppers like to have their roots in warm soil. So one thing you can do after you put your plant in the ground is to take some flat rocks or some bricks and put them around the plant. They'll absorb the heat from the sun and help keep the roots warm so the plant's happy. And that's another quick tip from Hallelujah Acres. Back to you, George. We're going to plant some radishes in this spinach box. The first thing we're going to do, we've already got our prepared soil in there from the last episode, and I'm just going to sprinkle very lightly some organic fertilizer um, over this bed. I'm just going to work it in a little bit into the soil with my hands and level it out. And now I'm going to make my indentation like I did with the V with the raised bed with my hand. Then I'm going to take the seed, the radish seed, and I'm going to just sprinkle it so it's throughout the row there. Then I'm going to take my vermiculite I'm going to take my label and I'm going to put radish. This is a radish mix I have of different varieties. I'm going to put today's date, which is April 14th, and the days to maturity, which are about 25 days. I will put that in here. Then I will take my water. And I'm going to soak this down real good. Don't let it spray too hard or you'll disturb your, your seed. And we're actually going to put the spinach top back on. It'll help hold that moisture in there. And when we see the seeds start to germinate, then we'll remove the cover, make sure they're kept watered on a regular basis. And you'll be amazed to see in uh, less than a month, we will be eating radishes right out of this little container <laughs> that came with our spinach. All right, now you've already seen um, how we prepare the beds, how we prepare the soil, how we plant seeds within them, and uh, next week, we're going to come back and see how we actually plant seedlings in these prepared soils that we have made. I hope you'll join us next week for another segment of this gardening series.